What's up everybody? This is Mark Casto and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I cannot wait to share this conversation with you. This is a dear friend of our family that's been connected to us for 13 years, Chloe Tilly. We're going to talk about personal branding today. She's the founder of Wonder Creative Studios. She takes personal branding to the next level. I've watched her come alongside entrepreneurs and creators and take their vision, their dream, their purpose for their business and make that thing just come to life. So I can't wait to jump into this conversation, get a notepad out, get something to take notes because you're about to receive some valuable information right here on the Wise Builders Podcast. Well, welcome to this episode of the Wise Builders Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Casto, and today I'm excited to have a good friend of our family, somebody that's been connected to us for many, many years, Chloe Tilly. Chloe, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited. I got you on my podcast before I got on yours. I so know. I beat you. Well, <laughs> just be waiting after I have this baby, then we'll talk about it. Chloe <laughs> is very pregnant mm -hmm. as we record this podcast. Yep. So it's not like she really needed anything else to do. But I told her, I was <laughs> like, hey, I want you on the podcast. You know, we've made a shift to, you know, this podcast used to be just the Mark Casto podcast. I talk about whatever I wanted. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like, man, I'm connected to so many people that are doing really cool things, not just like in the church, but like people that are building amazing businesses. And I'm like, I want to talk about it. And so I'm on my own unique journey right now of launching some of our own stuff with, with Long Path Publishing. And that's really exciting. And that's led to conversations with my friend, Michael Miller. He's a real estate guy. That was a great episode. I've did a podcast with Rick Pino. He actually pre-released my podcast episode on his YouTube channel and it like really did well, but I'm like, that was for my channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cross, what is it? Cross. Cross pollination. Yeah, there you right. Go. <laughs> so <Support it. laughs> anyways, you know, but that's cool to have friends that are abroad. But I think that there's many people know we like lead a church here in Covington and we have like really amazing entrepreneurs and business owners and really cool things that are happening inside of our kingdom family here. And you happen to be one of them and um, and really like led the way for a lot of people in the family as far as the entrepreneurial journey. But before we get into all that, I have to let you know, like. We have walked with Chloe now for almost 14 years. Like it's at least 13. Yeah. Right? It's at least 13. Sure, math. I, I think, don't. yeah. <laughs> 13 <laughs> years. I, Destiny and I got to walk with Chloe like through um, everything, singleness. <laughs> yes. Dating. Breakups. Breakups. <laughs> with the same person who is now my husband. <laughs> yeah. Dating, marriage counseling. And then we got to yeah. officiate you and Aaron's wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, we've been there. My wife's been there in the birthing room. Yep. I mean, we're in Chloe Tilly's Bless life. You, Destiny Casto. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that, um, for me, it's just really special when the Lord allows you to walk with somebody like that and watch somebody come into like maturity and fullness and transformation. So Destiny and I have got to see you go from, um, just a little girl in Cleveland taking you even to India one time in 20, 2011. Yeah. That's when that was. Um, and I didn't even think, I don't even think you really liked me then. Um, you were just kind of like, ah, eh, you know, yeah. whatever. We can talk about that another time. But <laughs> I, the Lord told me on that India trip, because I was like looking at you, I was like, she doesn't really want to have anything to do with me. I don't know what that really is. I don't know if that's like because I'm the pastor or leader or whatever. But the Lord spoke to me on that trip and he was like, just give it time. You know, you're going to have an amazing connection with her. Like you and Destiny are going to be very connected. And then it was just like it all started blossoming from there. And it was just it's amazing. So I just want to tell you how awesome it is to be able to have the seat that we've had to watch you become the woman that you are today. Thank you. And like from just like you're already an amazing person, but watching you become a wife a mom now and and like an entrepreneur like you're not just kind of entrepreneuring you're like entrepreneuring mm -hmm. yes, <laughs> and so that's why i wanted you on the podcast today was just to talk about 
um, your business and what you're doing. And yeah. uh, I think it can bring a lot of value to people that are trying to build their businesses. Yeah. And um, and in particular, branding. So before we talk about your business, let's find out a little bit about Chloe Tilly. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, as you all heard, I'm a wife, a mom, and creator, artist, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been in business for about five years. It'll be five years next month. Your own business. Yes, my mm -hmm. own business. Um, but before that, I was doing like kind of the normal, like working nine to five marketing job kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but I mean, <laughs> I never really saw myself um, starting a business per se. I, I like, I really, whenever I was a kid, I wanted to be a Broadway actress and I still kind of do. Not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> if that opportunity came around, I don't know if I would be able to deny it, but um. No, but I mean, like, I, I remember um, there was this, like, moment that I had, um, at, like, a, a long time ago, there was an altar hall for, like, anyone that felt like they were called to business. Mm -hmm. You gave this altar call. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I answered it. But I remember in my brain, I was like, why am I answering this? And then, um, and then in our marriage counseling, which I've told you this before, but like the last one or pre premarital counseling, the last one that we had, you felt like there was something like entrepreneurial on mm -hmm. me and Aaron. And I was like, what does entrepreneurial mean? <laughs> like, I didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so anyway, that was, it all kind of like took me by surprise. Like, I guess once I started Wonder Creative, I looked back and I was like, there were signs that this was coming, mm -hmm. you know? And I mean, like, is this like my ultimate destiny in life? You know, I don't know necessarily, but I feel like the Lord has definitely blessed it and yes. used it. And um, it's been a journey of like learning so much about myself and um, about what I really, um, what I feel like a true kingdom business should be. Right. And so that's been challenging, but it's been also really great at the same time. So, um, Anyway, but yeah, I mean, we're going to hit five years and I don't, if anybody knows anything about business, the mm -hmm. first like five, three to five years of business is hard. Yeah, <laughs> It's a lot of building. It's a lot of, um, it's a lot of grit. It's a lot of mm -hmm. sometimes hustle. I know like that's like, a, you know, not like the best word to say, but I think it's like, you know, when it's time to push and you know, right. when it's time to rest kind of like giving birth yeah. um you just have to know like when it's time to like really push through and and um work towards your goals and so that's kind of what it's been like the last five years is just like constant building and adapting and evolving and so um that's kind of where we're at right now but um do you want me to talk about like what wonder creative is or yeah i was gonna ask you you know about maybe what inspired you or motivated you to even pick that niche like yeah you know and start wonder creative like yeah. what was the inspiration what was the motivation so i started wonder creative um i was three months postpartum with our first son asher and um i gotten laid off from my job which Fun. was awesome <laughs> um it was very out of nowhere i did not expect it at all and it was devastating. I mean, I remember calling you crying and like we were, I mean, we were already struggling financially. Mm -hmm. And then like that just was, that was just the worst. So um, at the time I was like, you know, this was like pre-COVID. This was 2019, like mm -hmm. beginning of 2019. And um, people weren't really working from home. Like it wasn't like a um, super normal thing, you know, right. like it very much was about going to the office and, you know, doing the normal thing. And so I had really a, a privilege with this company that I worked for, um, to not only work from home, but I moved away. I moved to South Carolina mm -hmm. while I was working for them. And I basically asked them, I was like, we feel like we need to move to South Carolina. I was living in Tennessee at the time. And I, was like, I would like to propose that I work from home. 
and keep my job. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and um, they allowed me to do that. And so like, I felt like me finding something else like that was just impossible. Sure. Because I didn't have like, I, 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 I didn't even know where to start with that. And it just felt like in the, in the American work environment, it's not very welcoming of new moms mm -hmm. that want to prioritize being home and have flexible hours with their children. Maybe a little bit more now. Sure. Um, like we are making some progress in that, but I still feel like it's very difficult. Sure. And so anyway, so I was like, um, everyone always says, Chloe, you should just start your own thing. Maybe I should. Mm -hmm. And so I remember thinking about it, like praying about it, talking to Aaron about it. And then I remember calling you guys and you guys were, were um, you were already in Covington by that point. Mm -hmm. And um, you like blessed it. And I just like sat down on the couch and heard Wonder Creative in my head. And I was like, just kind of thinking through like it being a marketing agency. Right. Because that's what I had done, you know, all up through my career so far. And then, um, and that's kind of what, like I sat down on the, on the couch, I bought the domain, I did all the things, I secured the social handles and then that was it. And so I like started the business <laughs> and, um, and then it didn't really like go super far at first because I didn't really know what I was doing. Sure. So to anyone that is start is in the middle of starting a business or wants to start a business, just know that that is a part of it. it like is. you really just have to understand that there's going to be a learning curve right. for you to figure out even what you enjoy doing. Right. Um. And so I, I started it as just kind of anything and everything. And then um, what you would say is a big mistake, big mistake. Yeah. Like <laughs> I think that's the important part I was going to ask you about, because I remember you being pretty adamant, like, I've, and I think that's natural when you're first starting your entrepreneurial journey, you're like, I got to offer everything because I got to yeah, take anything that comes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's kind of why I did that because I'm like, well, I like to do lots of things and I've done lots of things. Like I've done sure. social, I've done print, I've done, you know, traditional marketing. Like Chloe's I've, had some pretty cool jobs. Let's I've be worked, honest. Yeah. Like I've done travel and tourism. Like, okay. Yeah. Let's just talk about this. Let's because <laughs> I asked who Chloe Tilly is. Right. And so, um, I think it's super cool. If anybody's dr driven in the South, you see yeah. barns painted red with these big rock city, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, sea rock city, sea rock city, um, big paintings on these barns. That was your first, like, I painted those barns. Just <laughs> <laughs> no, no that, but that was like your first marketing. Gig, it was right? my internship that right. I did. And then they offered me a job um, yeah. after I graduated, which is not a small thing. Like that's no, a major it was, company. It was awesome. Like it was, a, yeah. I took it for granted for sure. Uh, I look back on that and I'm like, dang, but um, it was like, I don't think, cause you know, you're right out of college or just sure. like, whatever. I feel like I could have probably been more thankful for it in, at the time, <laughs> but, um, but it was super fun. Like I got to go on the news. Like I got to dress up. I yeah. Got I remember to, I was like, this is a cool mm -hmm. deal for you. Yeah. It was super fun. Um, yeah, I have fond memories working that job. Um, and then, and then I worked for like a, a large fitness uh, company that everyone would probably know. Um, that's where I got laid off from. So I'm not going to say who it is because I don't want to, I don't know. I just don't want to say anything, but, um, but anyway, I worked. She's in not there. bitter. She's, she's, <laughs> she forgives you, but she's still not going to give you publicity. No, I won't. <laughs> Even though we do have memberships there, <laughs> but you know, whatever is fine. Yeah. Whatever. Um, so yeah. Um, I worked that in their mark. I worked in their marketing department. Yes. And so that was interesting, but um, yeah. So offering anything and everything, I was like, yeah, because this makes sense because that's kind of what I've done. And I feel like that's like my strength. Sure. Um, but then I, you know, the one thing that I said I would never do was websites. I was like, I can't, I can't do websites. It's just too much. But I had a friend that was a photographer and she reached out to me and was like, I really need a website. Um, I would love for you to do it. And I was like, oh, okay. And so I did a little bit of research and I found like this whole niche of um, 
creatives um, or how do I say this? Like designers that create specifically on this platform called sure. Show It. Sure. And it like, oh, it swung open the door because yeah. um, a lot of the designers were offering branding and website and that was like their thing. And I was right. like, hmm, interesting. And so, um, so I kind of like fell down this rabbit hole with this project and she was so kind and, and letting me kind of learn. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I really do want to help you. Sure. And one of the things that I've always prioritized is like just excellence. Like, yeah. you know, even if I'm like learning, like I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. And so I did that project and that kind of started this like ball rolling of photographers like wanting to work with me and in doing branding and website and then that's whenever i just like threw myself into that niche because mm -hmm. um at the time it was like really really big and it still is now um but i just found like that's what i really love to do because it was mm -hmm. so creative and so open yeah and um i really liked that uh, instead of like doing just marketing yeah yeah, because I feel like you came into a niche where you were like, okay, Wonder Creative, I want it to be like super creative. So mm -hmm. naturally, you started branding for other creatives. Yeah. That's primarily where you, you started rolling. And like, I thought it was super cool because I watched you take people that were so unique, so gifted and talented and skilled in their particular expertise. And like, you did not give them just some kind of ordinary website like you really made their personality you digitized their personality yes which was super cool yeah. so like when you came to somebody's website by the time you were done looking at it, you not only knew their story but you knew what kind of person they were mm -hmm. which i think is super cool because i'm like the one thing that people connect with more than anything and i think you would testify to this is they connect with the person more than the brand yes. and so the brand has to have that personal touch and I think that that's one thing that I, that Dusty and I've talked about many times is like, I think you nail that in the sense of like, what, what does Wonder Creative do well? You really put the personal touch on their brand. You know, like, it's really amazing to watch. It's fun for me because like what inspires me the most is my clients and their stories. Sure. And so whenever I approach a project, I'm like getting inside their brain, getting inside their like whole life, their world. Mm -hmm. Um, because I believe that people really, they make buying decisions based off of emotional connections, mm -hmm. really. I mean, even if you're buying from a brand like Starbucks or Target or whatever, like you have some sort of like emotional trigger that comes up whenever you make that purchase, Absolutely. whether you realize it or not. Oh, hundred percent. And so, um, but even like, aside from like the marketing part of it, I love, um, I love like elevating artists to be mm -hmm. all that they're meant to be. I feel like if you like you're special, like every artist is special. They bring something unique to the table, every creative entrepreneur, whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I want to highlight that because I've like my whole thing is like you need to stand out in a crowd. Like mm -hmm. it's a saturated market. I want to sing you know? your intro for your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like when Chloe came out with her intro for her podcast, I was like, everyone in my family sang it for the two weeks in a row. <laughs> it's so catchy. It is catchy. <laughs> the Wonder Creative yeah. Podcast. Yeah. yeah. So you're made to stand out. Yeah. You I mean, but for real though, like if you I want to kind of get up and dance for a second. I mean, okay, we'll just stay here. Okay. Let's just stay here. <laughs> You and I it's both. Your podcast. Are, yeah, I mean, we can do it <laughs> if you want to. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, I just I really like I enjoy that part and I also feel like it's really important for mm -hmm. if you're gonna invest, you know, in your in yourself and in your business, um, it should be like as far as branding is concerned, it should really be um setting you apart. And yeah. making it very clear to your audience who you are and what you do yeah. and how you serve. Yeah, I would, it kind of leads into my next question because I, I shared my perspective of what I think really sets your your brand mm -hmm. apart in that particular niche. But what do you believe sets like your approach to personal branding? What, what makes it different than what maybe is 
standard in the industry? Yeah. Um, I believe that the way that we approach projects um, is really important because we see the person, the the business owner, mm-hmm. and their unique goals. Okay. And um, I'm not really <laughs> – like I, I'm not afraid to tell my clients this is a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> like well, you don't the- need to do, like you don't need to do this. Or even if they're reaching out, I'm like, it's too soon for you really to invest in branding right now. Um, like I'm not, I don't do this. Um, yes, obviously it's a business. It brings me money. It's income, whatever. But like I'm not to the point where it's like I see everyone as like everyone's a project, everyone's a you know money to me. Right. right. And so um, I think that unique perspective and being able to like see into a person and their goals is what really sets us apart because there are, and I'm not I'm not the kind of person to like be negative or or say anything negative about the way other people do things, but. Sure. There are other, you know, agencies out there that really will just do what you ask them to do, which is great. Um, But I have such like a deep integrity for the project. So like if you come to me and you're like, I really believe that I need branding to set me apart in my industry and I'm really trying to um, reach a younger demographic or something like that. And we get into like the strategy and I'm like, yes, this is what we've like outlined. This is, you know, your target audience. These are their wants, their needs, their desires, all this stuff. And then we get into the design portion and you're starting to make decisions that are not based off of that. Like you're, you're kind of like um, maybe leaning into your personal preferences a little bit too much or whatever. And I'm not afraid to be like, hey, remember the goal of the project. Remember like what we talked about. I know it's going to be easy for you to just want to get off into like what you think is best or like your personal preferences, which I want that I want people to love their own brands, obviously. But I'm like, remember the goals of the project. Remember what you wanted. Remember why you reached out. And so sometimes like sometimes we have that come up and sometimes we don't. And it's, you know, smooth sailing. But um, I Mm. think probably the thing that sets sets us apart is that like heart for excellence and integrity for every project and for every business owner that I work with. And we all also like, I cheer my clients on all the time. Like I love yeah, my do. clients so much and it means a lot to me that they, I mean, people have saved up their money to work with me. Sure. You know, like I take that very seriously. Like it's, mm-hmm. It's more than a project. Like it's an exchange um, in so m- many more ways than just money. Right, right. Yeah, you said you, that you have deep integrity concerning the project, but I think that's because you have deep integrity towards the artist yes. or the creator that you're working with because mm-hmm. not there's not a lot of people that would tell somebody, hey, you know, it's probably not time yeah. to work on that unless you care about mm-hmm. the individual. And I think that that, is the goal if we take it into the kingdom kingdom entrepreneurship which you know entrepreneurship through the lens of jesus right it's like the goal like we all need to make money that's Mm -hmm. obvious but the goal is serving people right like so ultimately like i want to do what's best for that person even if it means that it's a no to work Mm -hmm. together yes um and and to help people navigate and i think that that is something again, Desi and I talk about your business all the time because you really, um, you, you do it as unto the Lord, like it's mm-hmm. evident and you treat the project and the process ho- as holy. Like it's a big yes, deal. It's sacred. And, um, I think that's, I think that's really cool. However, I want to, I want to ask you this, this is kind of off the cuff here. I wasn't planning on asking this, but you keep bringing up the word excellence and like you, you do everything with excellence. Like I'm a little embarrassed that I don't have my curtain up today with you on the podcast. (laughs) We, we call these the garage episodes with the the warehouse episodes. No, we're still piecing together the, the studio, but, um, you bring up the word excellence and I think that everybody wants to operate. I think the majority of, especially kingdom entrepreneurs, they want to operate in excellence, and you should. 
Mm. Is there a downside to that? Like, I want to mm. talk about excellence and maybe confusing that with perfectionism. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yes. I think I've had my own um, journey with perfectionism and mm -hmm. I feel like I really used to be such a perfectionist. Like I wouldn't put something out unless I knew that it was as perfect as I could make it be. Mm -hmm. um, but it's incredibly unrealistic. Um, and I'm not really like, I'm not really that person. I mean, I know there's like this saying where it's like, done is better than perfect or something like that. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And I don't really like that either because I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, maybe. It kind of just depends on the situation. Sure. Um, But there are plenty of things that I've, and we've had conversations where mm -hmm. it's like I just sit on things because I'm like, I want it to be great. I want it to be great. And I feel like sometimes that is like my superpower, but I have to know when it's time to like, relinquish that control. And, and I think I have a little bit of a better compass now. Sure. Um, knowing like, okay, like I, I think, I think it's okay to, to release this. Um, but I mean, perfectionism, it's just not, if you focus on that in your business, it's really going to hold you back so much. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think coming into whatever it is that you're doing with a heart, um, with a whole heart, like yeah. I feel like even more than excellence, it's like a wholehearted approach is like kind of what I more so think about in the day to day. I'm like, am I like, <laughs> am I putting my whole heart into this? Yeah. And then if that's true, my skills, my, my spirit, my, everything that I have that makes me unique in, in what I offer in my business. Am I doing that fully and fully unto the Lord and with integrity and with a whole heart? Yes. Okay. Then we're good. Yeah. And I think <laughs> imperfectionism is just a lie. Like yeah. it's just a lie that it's, and, and you'll never get there. Well, and you know this too, like you probably struggle with you probably struggled more with that within yourself than you did your clients. Like, oh yes, you know, like when you're releasing your stuff, your product, yes. you know, oh, rather, yes. because I bring this up because you can be an amazing, you are an amazing guide to your clients, but then when it comes to yourself, you're like, what? what I'm are, the worst client on the face of the planet. <laughs> yeah. To yourself. <laughs> to myself. You're hardest on yourself. Mm -hmm. So, so like, how do people navigate that? Like, I, I just thinking out loud myself, like one of the ways that I see working through like perfectionism would be, hey, I'm building, which means that <laughs> that there's mm -hmm. never like I don't have to have okay, this there's finality to this. It's like if I want to go in two weeks later and I find a better way to tweak it, mm -hmm. I can like just be impatient with mm -hmm. building even, mm -hmm. but it's like, I think we're so scared to put ourselves out there unless we think everything's perfect. Um, and I love what you said, like, um, done is better than perfect. But at the same time, like, I understand putting excellence to something too. You don't want to put something out there that misrepresents yourself or like, I think your definition of excellence is wholeheartedness. Yes. So it's like, so what is like what what how, how do you navigate that the the something that i think about with every decision that i make is the longevity and like the um the long path mm -hmm. so i don't make decisions that are hasty i don't make decisions based off of temporary uh circumstances most of the time sometimes i have and it's worked out and other times I have, and it has not worked out, sure. but I'm always making decisions based on, um, will I be proud of this even like years down the road that right. I, that I did this, right? you know? And I think sometimes, um, in business we get like shiny object syndrome where we're like, Oh, like this is the key and this is what I need to do. And right. this person is doing this. So, I, and that's working for them. So I need to do that for me. And that's not always true. Sure. And so 
um, if you're constantly like pivoting and doing things and like throwing your audience for a loop, it can be really difficult um, to build up that trust and credibility and um, longevity in your business. And so I think one of the things that I just have naturally always done is thought about longevity and sustainability for years, like over year, over year, over year, over year. And that's why a lot of what I've done has been like, you know, I, I focus on like deep roots is like yeah. what I'm like, I haven't really pivoted a whole lot in my business. I still offer the same things that I did other than whenever I first started when it was just anything and everything. Yeah. But like once I got that photography client and started doing brand and web design and I threw myself into that, I've pretty much stayed in that lane this whole time. Yes. And I, I don't, that's not necessary. I'm not saying that that's right for everyone, but it was right for me. And it allowed me to really set my focus and become excellent at something. Yep. Um, and like dig in my heels, you know what I mean? Instead of yep. just like constantly trying to, um, I mean, there is a sense of like evolving and adapting and being relevant, you know, cause times change, but, um, I think just for me personally, that's what it has allowed me and given me the space and the permission to, to develop that wholehearted approach that I have. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. So, um, man, I could ask you so many questions, but I'll try to try to get through these, but in your experience with brand building, like mm -hmm. what are, what are some common misconceptions people have about personal branding and and how do you address that through Wonder Creative? Um, well, uh, just initially, I think a lot of people think that branding is um, a logo. <laughs> what? And um, <laughs> it can be. Sure. Um, branding is, um, like I was talking about before, at least my definition. I mean, honestly, you could go on Google or type in freaking in jet chat GBT or whatever you want and ask it what branding is and it will give you an answer. Sure. Um, but like my personal, mm -hmm. like what I believe branding is, is, um, it's so much more than just like the appearance of a brand. Um, but it really is how the brand makes you feel. And, um, like, you know, I, I've said this and I said this earlier too, like when you go to Starbucks, like we all, yeah. or I, I mean, any brand, like name a brand, you know, like when you sure. go, I'm just, I just think of Starbucks because it's easy. Like when you go to Starbucks, you have a certain feeling about sure. like there's, you don't have to pay now almost like $10 for a drink. Like, why are you paying $10 for a drink? Like really why? And it's, it's because it makes you feel good you know, you can count on it. You know what you're getting. It's consistent most of the time, um, you know, and like those things come up for you and like that's branding. That's their branding. You know, like they have successfully um, um, put themselves in your brain um, and created all of these like neural pathways in your brain to like to um, get you to think of certain things whenever you think of Starbucks. Yeah, okay? 100%. So um, the misconceptions that I feel like with personal branding, um, and when I say personal branding, it's like, um, you know, you have like a more personal approach to your business. Sure. So like I would say that my branding is somewhat a person, like it's a personal brand, I guess. Um but I think focusing so much on how it looks as far as like fonts and colors and logo and all that stuff and not really thinking about, well, how are you bridging your world to the world of your client or the world of your consumer or customer, whatever that may be. And like that bridge is kind of what branding is and, yeah. and kind of in my brain. So when I'm working with my clients, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm like, you know your world, yeah, and they know their world. So, like, what is the the middle? You know. And I I love that you brought up or you brought this up earlier, but I want to bring it up again because I think it's a really important point. Like, some people get so obsessed with their unique touch on their brand that they forget their customer. Yes, and you and it, and it's like 
the point of your brand is not to is really not to make you look cool. Right. It's to show people how you can serve them. Yes. And Donald Miller talks about this all the time with story brand. Um, about how like you're not the hero of your own story. You're the you're guide. The guide. Yeah. And you nail that. Well, thanks. You do. I, well, I love Donald Miller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's all thanks to you because you gave me his book. But um, I didn't like him at first. I'm a secret. <laughs> I'm a secret like smuggler of Donald Miller books. <laughs> that's why I'm saying that's why it's important for me to do this podcast because people don't realize just how intrigued I am by business. You know that because you've walked with mm -hmm. me all these years. Only people that walk closely with us really know that everybody knows me for preaching and screaming and <laughs> screaming. church stuff you know yeah so people know me for church what I've done in the ministry and I'm like yeah but there's a whole other side of Mark Casto that really enjoys like my favorite thing to talk to you about outside of you and your family is about your business. Mm -hmm. I love to talk to you about it. I love to challenge you about it. I'm always throwing a book that I feel like would resonate with mm -hmm. you, you know, I don't throw a ton of books at people, but there are certain ones that if I feel like they resonate. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I'm 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 a secret smuggler of the story brand. Yeah. I, I've given that book away to a lot of people. Yes, I still have it and I still reference it and I love it. And I think that he's like a brilliant man um, to break down um, what it really means to have a have a brand. I mean, like just go if you have if you're unsure of what like a brand is just go read story brand like yeah. it's just as simple as that yeah. and that will help you get so much clarity um because i really take a lot of his principles whenever mm -hmm. i'm working with clients um and apply them and um yeah like the whole hero and guide thing is huge mm -hmm. and really you know approaching your brand as a story. Like what is the story? Yeah. Who is, who is the villain? Who is the hero? Mm -hmm. Like what is happening, you know, in your customer journey and how can you break it down like that? Yeah. It's smart. It's, it's so interesting. I love that you focus on personal branding more than just like a company branding. Cause you can do that. Yes. And I you, have, cause you have done it, mm -hmm. but I'm saying, I love that you're, you really focus on the personal branding. I heard a statistic the other day, listening to a podcast where they did a massive market research. They spent thousands upon thousands of dollars to do a national research for marketing. And it's interesting, over 60% of people that buy from companies is only because of the personal branding of the CEO. Mm, yeah. And it's like people want to work with people. They connect with people. Yeah. And so I love that. That's why I was saying earlier, you do a really great job at, the personal branding. You represent the person well. You mm -hmm. let people know who they're working with and yeah. show them who they're working with. And like you look at websites that you've created and you're like, I know this person. They're vibrant. They're like, I I could, I know who they are by looking at their website. If I've never met them before, I'm like, I know what to expect though when I do meet them. Yes. And that's so important. Like people don't understand, like um, people don't buy from you just because you offer a service, but like they buy from you, it, whether or not they like you or not. Yes. Like no trust. Those are the, yeah. the three things that people are really looking for. Even if the brand isn't a personal one. So like, um, example, I worked with a floral studio, like, uh, was it last year? Yes. Last year. Um, and you know, it was like, it was two ladies you know, and their personalities were extremely vibrant, amazing, like they're amazing people, but their brand, you know, it wasn't like based off of them. It was the studio, you know, but even if like you come into a scenario where you're branding a company or the business, like we still break it down to the point of how can this be something that can be felt and can be like, a sensory experience for people. And so they wanted, you know, something very vibrant. And so that's what we pursued. And like, it does have so much of their personality and their branding. Um, and then a lot of that comes through their social media. They're very, like, very intentional with their social media presence. And so I think that plays a role in it as well. Um, but I think with any, any business, like you can break it down to the point where, um, it's something that can be felt for people. Yeah. 
So uh, one of the most intriguing things I think about your business is your process. Like when you onboard clients and mm -hmm. I've, you've walked me through this and shared it with me and it, it's just awesome because it's so detailed, but it's so unique because you, you're learning how to mine the gold out of people. Yeah. Um, so like, how do you, if you want to speak into that, like, I guess the question would be like, how do you help your clients find like their unique, you know, like their identity and articulate like their unique personal brand? Yeah. Well, I do have a very <laughs> strict process. Um, pretty much every client, um, depending on what they book with us, um, they're, they're pretty much getting the same framework um, that every client gets. And um, we, like, I, I give them like a worksheet, like right out the beginning. Um, it's a pretty intense worksheet. Um, a lot of clients are like, wow, like I did it, you know, these were questions that I didn't think about that I should have been thinking about. And I wouldn't have thought about had you not asked them. Um, and it's very like transformative for them because it gets all of their, everything up here and on their, like in their head on paper or on the computer. And so, um, we kind of start there and then I do a lot of consulting with them after they do that. Like, that's like one of the initial things that we talk about and breaking all of that down. And if, and if there's things that I see, I'm like, this needs to, we need to go more in depth here, you know, whatever. Um, we talk through target audience and all that stuff and get into really the details, the, the goals, not just now, but like this year, next year, five years, 10 years, like what are we working towards? Because I'm not interested in just making something that meets the need now. Like I want this to grow with you. And so like really creating that strong foundation is what matters the most to me. Um, whenever I'm working with my clients. Um, and then of course, like we have tons of checkpoints and touch points throughout the process where I'm hearing back from them. Mm -hmm. Um, because like it's collaborative. I'm not, I'm not here to just do it all for you sure. in order for this to be magical. Like you've got to do your part too. Right. And so there is like a lot of homework, you know, in the beginning. And then once I get everything I need, once we really talk things through and I feel solid, then that's whenever I start designing based off of all of that or my team. Um, and, and it's, um, it's a pretty solid process. Like it's, I feel like finally after five years, like it was for a while, it was like, I felt like I was reinventing the wheel all the time. But now I'm like, no, like this is a solid framework now. And yeah. I'm glad that we got there. Well, it not only helps, I think it's cool because people don't realize like how important it is to have a good guide. Th this is what I tell people, you know, with what I'm launching with Long Path Publishing is, you know, like I'm dealing with self-publishers or authors or people. And I'm like, look, the, the reality is you don't need a book deal to start making an impact. You just need a really good guide. Yeah. And I think, again, I always champion you in the sense of like, you're a very good guide. And so like when you're, when people come to work with Wonder Creative, like you're not only pulling stuff out of them so that you can design well, but like you're actually serving that business owner, that entrepreneur, that creator in an amazing way, because they're able to walk away from that really seeing the depth and the meaning and the value of their own brand. Correct. Which that, I mean, like that's, that's worth all the money you would pay to invest in something because people, a lot of people don't even see the value of themselves. Right. They don't see the value of their business. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think that your process that you have, <clears throat> excuse me, with wonder creative, like you're not just serving them in that way. So you can have a really cool website. Yeah. <clears throat> you're helping them like see the value of their, of themselves and their business. Yes. And I'm constantly looking for things that I can highlight. And, um, you know, if there's something really unique that they talk about, a lot of times clients will just say things and they don't think that it's anything special. I'm like, um, excuse me, what'd hey, you just say? Wait a second. I'm like, wait, no, we need to like, this needs to be a huge part of your brand. Like yeah. this needs to be or a huge part of your aesthetic or whatever it is. Like, 
Um, and so I'm constantly looking for that. Um, whenever we're the branding exercise really is like that first step. And then mm -hmm. it's like, once we get that going, we're just like, we're just, we're working on showcasing everything that we can yeah. from, from that document and kind of like getting a really solid story going. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Can you give people watching today, like, what are some key, like, strategies or techniques that you help um, individuals to build their, like, personal brand? Like, what's some things that you think, the, if you're going to build a personal brand, these things are important to think about? Well, I feel like, this is a great question, but um, I feel like, right now is like such an interesting time for business um especially given like social media and stuff mm -hmm. and i you've got me at an interesting time because i feel like i'm like reevaluating reevaluating so many different things in my own business well for obvious reasons of we're entering a new chapter of life with having a second baby but also i just feel like um consumers brains are different now like um it's covid it's <laughs> i i mean i don't know we can blame it on that sure i just no. think um i think people are like they can really like s people are smart um well how do i put this it's like i feel like consumers viewers whatever you want to say people on social media however you're reaching your audience i feel like they can kind of like see through what's real and what's not right and i think we are getting back to this place where it's really important to be authentic um and i don't mean authentic like oh just be your quirky self and like you right. know whatever i mean like get to the heart of your what it is that you if you're a business like get to the heart of what you offer sorry if you're a service provider yeah. um or you know if you have products or whatever it is like doesn't matter like you need to get to the heart of what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it um and and really think about the person on the other end of the screen or yeah. the other side of the screen whatever you want to say um and think about like their experience, get curious about them and listen. Like one of my favorite things that I really love to do is um, engage with my community because I am like a people person. Um, and this is always about people. It's not about business. I mean, it is about business, but business is about people and for me. And so I always want to connect with people. And so I'm always really open like about my journey and I'm like, this is awkward for me or this is new and I'm not afraid to like, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to try to be something that I'm not, you know? Sure. And so you're getting like, what you see is what you get kind of thing. And so I feel like for people right now to really like lean into the realness and the authenticity of your brand, because people can see when it's not authentic and when it's when you're being fake or when you're trying to be something that you're not <laughs> or when you're using your business to just be self-serving right yes that's a big one yeah. and it's like if you are a service provider and i say that because i work with a lot of service providers mm -hmm. so like photographers florists um designers whatever it's they are providing a service um like think about <laughs> you are you are um it's just really important to be thinking about your client in that way. Um, and not it just what I was saying earlier, like not, it, not just being like about projects and whatever, but it really being about serving them well. Um, but when it comes to like branding, um, just being like really curious and listening. And if you're in the early part of your business journey, that can go a long way too. like constantly listening to what uh, or asking questions and listening to what mm -hmm. um, your audience has to say and your clients. Like if you get a good client and it was a great project, do an offboarding survey or something and like get to the heart of like why it was so great. Um, 
because that's intel that you can use to further market your business mm -hmm. that is authentic. Like you had a great project and now it's time to keep marketing so you get more projects like that. And you can do that by leaning into your own process that was so great, yeah. you know? And so that's something that I'm always trying to do just personally with my business. But I feel like that's really important for a lot of people. Yeah. Listening. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know a lot of people like I was thinking about there was a day where Amazon FBA was like a big thing. And like everybody was like creating pro uh, products to sell on amazon and i remember people telling me like how it worked and basically it was find a product that has a lot of high volume going out mm -hmm. you know but find go through the reviews and find something that everybody said this is a great product but mm -hmm. it needed like for instance there was a i'm such a nerd i watch all this stuff and listen and pay attention but like there was a an example of a, a grease pan like something mm -hmm. that kept grease uh a splatter guard that that you put on top of a skillet and people were saying great product but what could have really made this nice was to have like a silicon handle or silicone mm -hmm. handle and um that would have been nice well this person goes saw that multiple times in the comments like this could have made this great so guess what he found somebody that can make him a splatter guard for grease put the silicone handle on it put the product up there with its picture, unique picture and took like half the sales of that other product. Yeah. So like that person was making 12 K like there, there are software out there where you can see how much a product sells on Amazon and that product selling for like 12 K. And now he just took six K of their market a month just Dang. by putting a silicone handle on the splatter guard. I say that because it's, you know, they're reverse engineering success. Basically they're seeing something that really works and they're reverse engineering the process. It's a little different what we're talking about, but no, in but the it, sense it applies. Yeah. It applies it applies because the way to to be helpful, mm -hmm. the way to increase your business is to listen. Yes. People will tell you what they want. And to be like really clear and make it easy for people to connect and work with you. Yeah. Um I think We've gone through a lot of like methods where we, you know, we, we do, we, we kind of try to make things complicated, um, by the way that we market things. Like, I feel like, I don't know, there's just some things that it can just get too, too complicated. There's too many steps to get someone there, but like, you need to just like, just make it clear. Like, yeah. because people are like, <laughs> whenever they're shopping or scrolling um on social media they're probably not wanting to buy they're just wanting to scroll they're just they're not they're, they're not coming to shop yeah. like you know so if you're going if you are marketing on social media you need to make it like really clear and really easy for people um it's because good. i think people are just like super overstimulated and exhausted <laughs> yeah <laughs> but, i'm like there's there's a lot of voices right now in the social media world that's like um they're seeing a trend that people are just like going we're over it mm -hmm. like in the sense of how we've done social media right and it's like and they're looking for unique voices that they trust to like if i'm going to be on social media i'm only following this certain voice or these certain kind of people I'm tired of all the noise and the chaos. I want to follow somebody that can actually take me somewhere. Yes. They can upgrade my life, help me in my business, help me with my parenting. Like it's very need based and which is why it's important. Again, don't want to go down this rabbit hole. Why it's important to pick a niche and go for it because people are looking for voices that can continue to bring value to them in parenting. I'm like, if you look at my Instagram, I'm following voices that I love in the kingdom. I'm following, I'm following voices that I love in business. Mm -hmm. I'm following voices that I love that help in parenting. And I'm definitely looking for food recommendations. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, who's the trusted voices <laughs> for showing me how to smoke something, grill something. Yeah. And when I say smoke something, I'm talking about food here, folks. Um, <laughs> um, good but, clarification. Yeah. So, so like, smoking food, grilling food, or a good restaurant recommendation. Like, but 
But my social media feed is not filled anymore with just anything and everything. It's very specific to what actually serves my time when mm -hmm. I'm on it. So got two more questions for you. Mm -hmm. Um one, this is well, it'll probably lead to more than two questions, but do you love social media? <laughs> uh, um, thoughts on social media? You know, I wouldn't say that like I I think I understand its purpose. Yep. Um, I love aspects of it. I think mm -hmm. it's incredibly powerful that we are able to connect with people all around the world sure um and of course that's a two-edged sword there but like because you're just exposed to so much mm -hmm. like it is like we're not in a time where information is lacking it's more of you need to filter what information you are receiving yes. like that's kind of more of what is important when it comes to social media i obviously think that there's um a lot of fake um you know, just fluff on social media. Oh, yeah. Um, and it really is about like more about what we want people to perceive about us rather than, you know, the truth. But um, I would say for me personally, like I love my community. I love the yeah. people that I have connected with, other designers, um, other creatives my clients that have found me that through social media, like I'm very thankful and I love kind of my corner of it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> my corner of social media. Um, but I mean, it is important and you know, we're in a, in a time where digital marketing is essentially social media. So, um, yeah, it's true. So, it's, so, I mean, it's, I think that there's no way around uh, saying that it's essential for building a business right now. Yeah. I mean, if I'm learning about a business, I'm like, do they have an Instagram? Do they have like a, yeah. because even I may not be ready to like invest, but I want to follow them to like, what's the start value that nurturing process, Yes, yeah. you know, like, um, and like to get to know them. So that happens a lot for me. So, yeah. I mean, it's incredibly valuable, but I also don't think you need to put all your eggs in one basket either. 100%. Have, I think that's a dumb decision. Yeah, it absolutely. Is. I mean, I know people that spend so much time on social media, they never send, see it translate into, into financial success. Right. And then they make an adjustment and they realize, wow, you know, social media, the best decision I made was to use my social media to get email to build my email list mm -hmm. and the email list was their front runner for all the resources. I think I read some the other day is like every dollar that you invest in your email list, you get a, a return on investment of $36 is the mm -hmm. average now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that is massive. Yeah. An email list is great because those are people that are really like your warmest audience, yeah. I would say. Yeah. But um, I think with social media, you have to just know like where it is in your like pipeline or funnel, whatever you want to say. Sure. And just like, and a better, I guess a better way to say that is like, what is the purpose? Like, what yeah. is the purpose of um, social media? And for me, a lot of times it's just like building connection, mm -hmm. um, expressing myself. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, like showing my work and, you know, just kind of like putting myself out there. And I think a lot of times, it serves as like a library of um, my brain and, you know, my business. And if people want like to just see what we're about, they have all these posts that they can go and look through. Yeah. So even if one doesn't take off, quote unquote, sure, it still matters because someone will be new and looking through my profile or whatever and see a post and it will do something for them. Like it yes. will sow a seed or help them, whatever it may be. And so, you know, when it comes for like, when it comes to engagement, I feel like, you know, you can't always just be sad if something doesn't take off like mm -hmm. every single post. Mm -hmm. So it all adds up. Yeah. And I think, um, yeah, we could do a whole episode on social media, email list building, all that kind of stuff. But I think it's absolutely essential. And I think that it's a conversation that you can't help but to have with people because they need to have some kind of 
presence on that in order to reach new clients. I mean, like you, you, most people that are starting a brand new business, if their circle is small, they've got to reach more people. They've got yeah. to make more connections and they've got to provide value over time. And like, that's not an overnight success unless you got thousands upon thousands of dollars to pump into ads. Like it's a long game, especially right now. Yeah, I a, feel like it's a long game. Yeah. I mean, it's a free way to market your business. So obviously it should be utilized, but you are going to have to like, you know, really think about what you want it to be for your business, what you want it to do for your business. Right. And then that helps you not put so much pressure on it too. Right. Um, because I think we put unnecessary pressure on social Absolutely. media and, and our followers. And it's like, maybe that's not everything, but it, it does have its purpose. Yeah, for sure. And I think a lot of people make the mistake on social media that it's got to be again, back to perfectionism. It's like people really like the things that are working the most right now on social media are more raw, unedited, not really fancy. Like, um, that's the stuff that people are connecting with again, because they are so hungry for authenticity. Like they're done with all the polished stuff. And again, I think that's, what's awesome about what I've seen you do for your clients is you've been able to give them something that looks really amazing, but it feels authentic. Like mm -hmm. it's not like polished and fake and like a fantasy, like you're, sh you're connecting their uniqueness to people's needs. I think it's really cool. So, um, what advice do you have for somebody out there who's just at the dreaming place mm -hmm. and they're like, Hey, I've got this dream. Um, I want to make an impact on the world. I feel like I've got a business inside of me. What, what do you say to that person? I say, write it down, write down everything, you know, every bit of information that, you know, it, even if it's like years down the road, um, I think it's, I think it's really important to, um, be like, I feel like you have more in you than you think you do. Absolutely. And if you don't take the time to like really write it down, then you'll never know like what like gold is there. Mm -hmm. Um, there's wonder in you. It's been there the whole time. <laughs> We're back to the intro. <laughs> but that, I mean, it's true. Like yeah. that's, that's what I talk about. Like there is wonder in you and it has been there the whole time, but maybe you just haven't taken a, ch like taken the time and space to really like let yourself go there because you've been afraid. Um, and so writing it down, and then like sharing it with people that are like you trust, yeah. um, share it with people that can, um, cherish that dream in their heart for you too. Because I think that's been one of the biggest things that you've done for me and also for Aaron is like, we share like these dreams with you and destiny and you hold them in your heart too and yeah. pray and think about it and, and, and that's huge. Like having that, that support is mm -hmm. really important and it makes it real. Like yeah. saying things out loud, it's like, it makes it real. Like, it okay. Does. And so, um, I think, you know, I, there's probably a lot of things that I could say like practical like, or not, um, more like tactical, you know, things. But I think that that's probably like, if you're in that dreaming phase, if you haven't done those two things, you just you just need to do them. You need to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would say that writing it down so that you can actually like, you know, it's it's a scripture verse. It's like write the vision down, make it plain so that those who read it can run. Like uh, there's a lot of people that never get anything off the ground because they never really take time to see what they have. And I'm like, you know, that's why I'm saying like, you should probably just reach out to Chloe to help you mine that gold out. I mean, like, I'm not sure that your onboarding process should just be for <laughs> branding. Maybe it's just to help somebody realize, like, there's intrinsic awesome. value inside yes. of every human being. And, like, there's no such thing as wasted purpose when you really sit down with any individual. And, Chloe, you know this. Like, I've, I, I'm a people person. I'll talk to a stranger that I've never met, like I've known him my whole life. 
Um, I've sat down with people from all different walks of life, different nations, wealthy, some of the most wealthy people in the world to homeless people. And, and like people that are absolutely living in the dumps of the earth, like under the bridge. I've talked to all kinds of people over the years. Everyone has incredible amount of value inside of them. Yes. You listen to their story. You listen to what they've gone through. You've listened to how they overcome or they made it just to today. And it's like, there's incredible value in you. And, and um, I think that that's one of the things that I'm like, I love that we have, not only do I love Aaron and Chloe, but I love your business, Wonder Creative, in that I know that you're awakening people that you work with to the value they have. And I think that's the gospel, right? The gospel yes. is, is you know, our, our friend Jeff Garriott, who's a part of our church, he probably defined religion the best I've ever heard. It. He said religion is self-hate. And I tell people the gospel is um, knowing the love of God towards you, your value that you have, and that gives you the ability to love yourself again. Yeah. Because Jesus said, love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right. And so, like, I want everything that we do, whether it's ministry in the form of church ministry or ministry as it relates to business, because that's a ministry too. If you're a kingdom person, that's a ministry. Um, I want the gospel to be in it. And the gospel is not the gospel until people can see the value of who they are. Of course. And that's something that I'm always kind of keeping or it's underneath or infused, I guess, in everything yeah. it's that, 11. that we do. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously I work with people that are not Christians, you know, sure, that sure. don't believe in Jesus, but that doesn't change the fact that like, I, um, am always thinking about them in that way. And yeah. that's one of our values is like kingdom creativity. And I just tell people right out the gate, listen, this is a part of our process. Like we are, um, we believe that creativity comes from Abba, our creator, and that doesn't change anything for you, but this is just an internal part of our process. Yeah. And you just need to know that, like, that's yeah. one of our values, like as a business. Um, and so anyway. No, that's good. I, and and people need to know, like, even you know, like they don't have to be be a believer in Christ to have value. Right. I yeah. mean, you know, they have value because they are they were created in the image of God. Right. You know, like they have incredible amounts of value. And I think it's sad when a lot of people in roles like you're serving don't see the value in people that are outside of the faith mm -hmm. when it's like, then what in the world are we doing? Right. This is why Christ came. This is why we're here, yeah. like to serve people, whether they believe what we believe or not. We're supposed to be awakening them to their value. And that in itself is preaching the gospel. Yes. And so um, anyways, I want to tell you that I'm proud of you. You know how much we love you. You're one of my favorite people on the planet. My wife and I both feel that way. We're proud of you as a as a, a wife, a mom, an entrepreneur. You're helping change people's lives. So we're super proud of you. I want you to tell people before we get done, um, you're Gary Go on maternity leave, obviously. Yep. <laughs> we're not having very, this baby today. Very obviously. <laughs> um, you're Gary Go on maternity leave, but you did just launch like a new product or a new offer, I should say, mm -hmm. um, for people, um, stellar status. Tell people a little bit about that, whatever you want, and tell yeah. them how they can connect and work with you in the future. So um, I, one of the things that, branding, like you're asking earlier, like what is branding? And, you know, I'm kind of talking about like how it makes you feel and all that stuff. And one of the things that, um, I feel is so important to branding is the experience that you're offering mm -hmm. specifically for service providers, um, to your clients. And that's something that I feel like I have always valued in my own process is, um, the client experience 
uh, aspect of working with us. Mm -hmm. Like I, at the end of the day, I, I want a beautiful brand for you or website, whatever it is, but I also want your experience to be top notch. Yes. And so from inquiry to offboarding, like all the way through. So I created, um, stellar status because I wanted to take other service providers through that, mm -hmm. that may not feel as confident in their process. Um, and feel like they're reinventing the wheel every time they get a client. That's good. Um, because I did that for a long time. Like I would get like a client that I'm like, oh my God, this is like my dream. You know, my dream client. I have to redo everything, you know, yeah, and like, yeah. and that's overwhelming, you know, like sure. you need to have a framework that is just very simple for you to get into and for your clients to be a part of and navigate and know what to expect. Managing expectations is huge. So that's um, kind of a little bit about Stellar Status. It's specifically for service providers. And um, I create a lot of like the system behind their client experience from inquiry to off. Which is so important. Yes. And then um, that's that. And that, you know, it's like um, a two day project. So we it's like an intensive for two days. Um, so there's that. And then of course, all my no normal services are there, but it's just kind of a wait list until I get back yeah. from maternity leave, which will probably be like sometime around the end of May ish, June. Something well, you like better that. jump on the wait list then. Jump yeah. on the wait list because yeah. the wonder in you, it's been there the whole time. It has. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so we're going to put all the information on uh, in the description below so that you know how to connect with Chloe, find her on social media go to her website, find out her services, get on the waiting list. I'm telling you, it's an amazing experience. It's, it, it'd be great for, for your business, but more importantly, it'd be great for you to just learn um, the value of who you are and the value of the offer that you have to the world. So, um, well, thank you for driving over here and doing this today. Thank you. And um, I'm excited. So please go work with Chloe. The Wise Builders podcast is Proverbs 24, 3, wise people build families, they build businesses, they build communities. And uh, and so I want to keep introducing you to voices that are doing those things. Chloe's definitely doing that. We love the Tillies. They, they are with, they've been with us for 13 years. Yeah. About to have a new baby. They are part of our church family here in Covington. And uh, so, um, yeah, we're just super proud of them and thankful for the podcast to give her an opportunity just to share with you. I know it's so, she shared so much helpful information. You probably need to go back and listen to it over and over again and just make sure you take notes this time, but, or you can just skip all that and work with her. So <laughs> just click the link uh, in the description below and connect with her. And uh, again, till the next episode, we'll see you later.